Uh, morning, this is uh, Nate G. This is the DPL Open House for Tuesday, October 17th. Uh, we'll be doing a little live trading and a lesson on TPS and volume profile combinations. And uh, off we go. Uh, this afternoon, um, I will be doing a... Um, uh, when I come back on... Uh, at one o'clock, I'll be doing a, um, a, a lesson on how to scan for the TPS systems or T -T -P TPS trades that um, that Nate introed, Nate Bear introed yesterday. So that's what I'll be doing uh, at one o'clock today. Uh, yes, a, a Edizutter. Oh boy, I hope I hope I said that right. Um, Nate Bear's chart settings um, are that basically this TPS TTM um, charts that I have up. Um, he uh, uses the um, uh, the eight, the twenty one, and the fifty five EMAs on his chart. He uses a uh, Bollinger band. Uh, in a light, uh, a very light color. Um, he has VWAP on his charts, and most importantly, on the bottom, he has the TTM squeeze. Uh, the mods made this really cool, uh, and I might have to update the chart setting, but the mods made this really cool uh, charts prompt. And it, that should give you a link to both of the TPS system charts in both Thinkorswim and TradingView. And what I'm going to do right now is give you the Thinkorswim version because um, apparently the link didn't work well. So hold on just a minute. Let's uh, share the Thinkorswim version. And we might need to update this. So, uh, TOS version of the charts. Let's do that one. Uh, who was it that was having who that mentioned that uh, they couldn't load it into their Schwab Thinkorswim? Can you try the one that I just posted in the room there? Sugar Doc, uh, you'd like me to share or reshare the Thinkorswim watchlist squeeze scanner? Are you talk? You're talking about the the squeeze scanner on the left hand side of the screen. Is that right? Yeah. And so what I can do here, I can show you where it is. Um. Let's see here. Uh, it's on YouTube and it's, oh, let's see here. It's uh, lesson number 12. So on, on YouTube, lesson number 12 down here, adding a squeeze, squeeze boxes to the watch list. Um, and then in the, um, we don't need to listen to that, but in the, uh, uh, what do you call it? The um, description are the links to each of the time frames. So I hope I hope that helps. Donna, that link worked. Okay, um, Ben, maybe we should replace. I don't know. I don't know if you can hear me. Maybe we should replace that think or swim link in that uh, Nietzsche charts prompt because um, it wasn't. It w apparently it didn't work for. For people last time. Sorry about that. How do you find me on YouTube? Uh, the, the, that's uh, that's another great prompt. Uh, I love these prompts. You can find me there. You have a hard time importing the 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 TV layout, Trading View layout. Well, let's just uh, let's just make a new one. You want to do that?
Adam Traders, um, yeah, you can set you can set things up manually. It just takes a long time, and if you can import that chart uh, setup, it will it will save you a lot of time putting on all the EMAs um, and the volume profiles and the Bollinger Bands and all those things. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. You can't scan, Nasser, you can't scan for TPS setups on TradingView. You need to scan for them um, in something else. There, there's a couple of different options to do that. Um, I use Thinkorswim, which I'm going to show at 1 o'clock how I do that. Um, and uh, you, there's also a setting in um, uh, TC2000 that allows you to uh, scan for uh stocks in in squeezes at on certain time frames um so really quickly ron that's great toss work today um really quickly if you are trying to import trading view it's really not all that difficult to get that trade get that chart set up um because you're just going to put three emas on your chart and you're going to put the eight the 21 and Nate uses the 55. I use the 34. Just, just a slight difference. Nate does not use E-Trade, but D-Man does. Um, I use Toss and TradingView. Nate uses um, TradeStation and TradingView. And D-Man uses uh, E-Trade and TC2000. Yeah, that's 1 p.m. Eastern. That's correct. I don't know if there's an equivalent eat, uh, <clears throat> squeeze study on E-Trade Pro. I really don't know. Uh, I'd have to thank uh, D-Man today for the a great trade on uh, Microsoft um, on this dip down. I was also playing the bounce on the cues, so... Uh, I played uh, the bounce on Microsoft. Uh, I was playing a sniper trade on the queues earlier um, off of this bottom. Um, we nailed this bottom. I took uh, you know a, 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 roughly two thirds of the trade off um, for about uh, what what was it like twenty percent, and then I rode the rest up. I I wish I would have ridden a little higher for for almost fifty percent. Um, that was that was a perfect uh, sniper trade right there, um, and the rest of the rest of tech also bounced. You know, same same time Microsoft bounced, so that was a nice trade. Um, and I have some Amazon too, which which also bounced. Uh, so that was that was also a nice trade. So Q's bounced. The rest of uh, uh, the rest of tech bounces at the same time. Uh, yes, I do have Jan7093. I do have um, volume profile on Thinkorswim. Um, it is horribly clunky, so uh, it does not work all that well. It, I mean, it gives you some levels, but it's not like volume profile here on TradingView, which is a visible range, which you basically moves as you move the chart and gives you uh, different different ranges. Yeah, if you're having trouble, uh, well, if you're having trouble hearing me, I can't help you there. Uh, if you're having trouble seeing me, yeah, you need, you don't, you, I don't know that you need premium, but you need, you know, you need the next level up to get volume profile. That That is for sure. Dennis, TPS stands for Trend Pattern Squeeze. That's uh, Nate Bear's primary edge and, and what both Nate Bear and myself trade uh, almost exclusively. Um, we, we do some other trades with some other edges, but that is, uh, that is, uh, kind of our bread and butter in this room. Um, and he did a video on it yesterday and I'm going to, I'll kind of go over it now because I'm going to talk about volume profile. 
um, as well. So, um, and, and how volume profile and TPS work, work together. Yeah, D-Man, D-Man calls the TPS TTM um, because the old uh, squeeze um, indicator on Thinkorswim is called TTM squeeze. I believe squeeze is available on TradeStation. I believe. I don't know that for sure, but uh, I believe it is. I don't use TradeStation, so I don't actually know the answer to that. I'm getting some good buying here today. Wonder if Qs are going to close their gap. If they do, they're probably going to see a bit of resistance up here at that gap close area. Uh, type a. I'm I'm curious. Um, how many people are in here for the first time today? That like they weren't in here yesterday. Type a seven in chat if today is your first day in to the open house. Type a seven in chat. Awesome. A lot of new people here today. That's fantastic. I love it. Yeah, t- think or swim, we can use the, the, the squeeze indicator. Yeah, welcome everyone. So, uh, yeah, yesterday you got um, a little bit uh, of all three of us. Um, you mostly got Nate Bear. You got myself and D Man a little as well. Um, and you got a taste of you know you and you're getting a taste of what it's like to be in the DPL room with all of us. Um, you, you know, because it's an open house, we're a little, we're on the mic a little bit more than usual, but not by much. Usually all three of us are on the mic at least once or twice a day, uh, talking about trades that we are in or have taken, um, and then available to ask, uh, to, to answer questions, uh, about trades or look at charts or anything like that. Um, I'm enjoying a coffee, just a black coffee is what I'm enjoying. Sorry, my, my mouth is really close to the mic, so you can hear it when I take a sip. <laughs> um, but uh, it's, I'm on the West Coast, so it's still morning, morning, morning for me. Um, and, uh, you know, getting up, uh, you know, an hour to 30 minutes before the opening bell is, uh, is a little bit of a, uh, of a stretch for a, a late night owl like myself. Uh, but I'm, I'm here on the West Coast. So I'm drinking coffee until, I don't know, at least for another hour. Nice, Will. Eastern Oregon. Love it. Um, And so what Nate Bear did yesterday was he went over uh, the TPS method, which I I can review here quickly. Um, We are looking for... um, Patterns, uh, we are looking for what TPS stands for is a trend, a pattern, and a squeeze. And so if we're going to, let's look at CRWD. That's something we traded yesterday and a little bit today. Um, We typically like to trade stocks that are in an uptrend when we talk about trend, right? Um, But uh, we also trade them to the downside uh, with, with puts. And um, this, uh, I would say that crowd is in a trend. So do we have a trend? Yes, we have an uptrend on crowd, right? Um, Do we have a pattern? And the pattern we're looking for, and especially yesterday, uh, before this thing kind of took off, this is what our chart looked like. And the pattern that we're looking for uh, in a trend pattern squeeze t- type setup, where's my tools? There we go. Is an up to a high, a pullback, and then a consolidation, right? A lot of times you see that shape. A lot of times we call that the bird pattern or the woodpecker. And that is the pattern that we're looking for to get into um, one of these TPS style trades. And that can be on any, uh, any, uh, chart. This is a 30 minute chart. It can be on a daily chart. It can be on a five minute chart. Uh, it doesn't really matter all that much. 
Um, we're just looking for a trend. So do we have a trend in this? Yes, check, we have a trend. Do we have a pattern? We, we've come up, we've pulled back, we're consolidating around the moving averages. These are 8, 21, and 34 moving averages. They are stacked, which means we have are in an uptrend, right? So do we have a pattern, right? Uh, whoops. Do we have a trend? Do we have a, a pattern? If I could type, that would be great. And then do we have a squeeze, right? So here, if we've got our, our checks, do we have a trend? Yep, we have a trend, right? Do we have a pattern? Yes, we have a pattern, right? Check, check. And then do we have a squeeze? And when we say squeeze, we are looking right here. Whoops, if I could just open that thing to make it just a hair bigger. There we go. We're looking for red dots on the TTM squeeze indicator. That means we are consolidating and building up compression. And yes, we have a squeeze, right? So we have a trend, we have a pattern, and we have a squeeze. This is a good TPS setup. Uh, Jason, the aid is not on here for me. I, I apologize. I, I can put it on here real quick. Um, I usually have the EMA. Let's make it, yeah, let's keep it in that blue. Let's make it an eight. Okay, so the eight is on there. Eight, 21, I will typically turn the 21 a, uh, a little thicker than most. I'll do it like that. And then the 34 is down there. Nate likes the 55. So we have a trend, a pattern, and a squeeze. And now we're taking an entry around these moving averages except one thing we've added to that is the ability to use a volume profile, which is over here on the left side of my screen to inform on an entry. And you can see these lines here. You can see these lines here. These are uh, volume at price levels and they can help us uh, make decisions on support and resistance. These are where the, the most people are in this area here at, at price. So it's, it's basically like volume on the bottom, except this is volume by time. And on the left, this is volume by price. So we see this larger line here. I'm gonna put a line there. And then that's a point of control and I usually like to make my point of controls red. And then I'm gonna come down here to the bottom end of this range, which is a value area low, and I'm gonna put another line in, and I'm gonna make it yellow. And so my risk reward on this trade would be a buy at or around this level here, 185.62, and a stop below that. Um, and it would have to be a close below that. Uh, court, what, what are monkey bars? Melinda, that's a great question. Um, do, she asked, she's asking if I use the same time frame to draw my VP levels as the, the time frame I'm playing the squeeze on. And the answer to that is no. Not necessarily. Here I can get a nice clean line, right? Um, right, it, it, it gives me a nice clean line. But if I'm really looking for an entry, I'm probably gonna come down here to a five minute. <clears throat> I'm gonna draw them initially on the three minute. And then I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna take a look and make sure they're still accurate on a five minute chart, right? I still have my value area low there. Here's my point of control. I would draw another line here as a level that we kind of have to get over as we start moving, right? And then we have our value area high up here, right? And once we get over that, it's smooth sailing or, it, or ideally it's smooth sailing because there's not a lot of additional volume up here. This, uh, Modi, this is trading view. 
Uh, you can get trading view um, <clears throat> uh, for different levels. I'm using um, at least the second or third level up, uh, but the, you can get trading view for, for free if you're just starting. Okay, so in this case, I'm using this volume profile indicator over here, um, and I can make these, let's make these a little brighter so you can see them. Let's go to 50. Let's do that. And D-Man did a lesson on volume profile yesterday. So you can see those lines a little bit better, right? Those are helping me find a point of control where the most people are at and then support and resistance levels for this pattern. Uh, the lower indicator here is a squeeze, a TTM squeeze, or in this case, if you're in trading view, you can put in squeeze pro. Um, the best one I've found, and most of us use this squeeze pro, uh, if you type in SQ Pro, you'll get uh, Squeeze Pro indicator by Make It Zero, and that's the one you you want. That's the one most of us use. Okay, so uh, this is this is yesterday, or actually this is this is Friday when we had this setup. Let's move it back to the 30 minute, right? We've made our entry and what we're looking for this to do is, let's get rid of our lines really quick. Uh, oh, sorry, let's hide those lines. What we're looking for this to do is break out this direction and continue up higher to break this, this high here, okay? So as we let this play out, Monday opened, we got a little bit of a spike down. You can see that, right? We got a little spike down, but it didn't close below this, this uh, stop out line. This yellow line is my, was my stop out when I originally set this, the trade up. And if I'm taking this trade on a 30 minute chart, uh, I'm gonna use that line on a stop below on a, th on a 30 minute candle. I'm not gonna come over here to a one minute chart and start watching it really tightly and get panicked as this thing whips down. I actually was in this uh, Monday and I added down here and then caught this rip up. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna wait till that candle closes on a 30 minute chart to stop out. And it did not, it just wicked down, ran some stops of people that had hard stops in there, right? And then, and then reclaimed the pattern pretty quickly. And then we moved up, and we were, and and uh, I took off profits into this into this break uh, of the more recent high, and then as we play it out, it just keeps going today, right? We get another whip down this morning, and another push up. Yeah, we do rigs. We do this all the time. We do this all the time in daily profits. I'm sorry, in DPL. I think I've given this same lesson 10 different times, but that, that's the thing, right? It's, it's the more you hear it from different people, the, the more it starts to sink in. And every time you might hear another thing that, or something new might resonate with you that you didn't quite get the first time around. Uh, and a little light bulb goes off, right? So we break down our trades like this all the time. And this, I think, I think, um, I think crowd still has room to go up because we are definitely in an uptrend. So that's the TPS pattern, right? As we look back, we are looking for names. Well, let me go back to the replay here. We are looking for names that look like this. Trend pattern, squeeze, check, check, check. And then 
we've added a kind of a third one to it. We are then looking for, and I'm going to make this smaller and I'm going to go forward by one candle. We are looking for a momentum change in the squeeze. And when we get that, we know things are working in our favor, right? We have red. We looked like we had it here. That didn't go. More red. Now we get another one. And that's, that's when we go. Boom. Right, and now we're into this extension here. Does anybody have any questions on that? I kind of went through that relatively fast. Uh, I know we're into the lunch hour, um, so I don't want to uh, take up too much more of your time, but since D-Man ran into my time, I'm going to run into lunch just a little bit. But volume profile, we use very extensively here. Um, as you can see, it helps us find support and resistance levels within these nodes, right? This is where people are. If you're above one of these point of control levels, it's bullish. If you're below it, it starts to get bearish. It just helps inform you on the trade and helps, you know, we all talk about reading charts, but this also helps inform your chart reading that much more. And you'll see sometime this week, right? Sometime this week, um, we'll have an argument over a level. We'll say, we'll have something that's pulling back. Well, you see here, for instance, you see this line I have here um, on Microsoft, All right? That was a line I drew a long time ago um, before I got into this bounce trade. And I was using volume profile and charting because this is, you see this double bottom here the day before. But this line was here yesterday and the day before that because I had drawn it based on volume profile, right? As you can see that large node that starts to stick out right there. It's changed slightly. It used to be right at this line. Now it's a little higher, right? And that's, that's the thing about volume profile is that when more... When more price action happens right at that level, the volume profile levels change, right? But as you can see, as we bounced, that is now acting as resistance. One, two, three different times. Uh, and that line was on there from days ago. So this really helps you figure out um, where your support might be coming in and where your resistance is. And, and as you heard D-Man come on, uh, we trade support and resistance. What was resistance, once it gets broken, then becomes support. Right? And you can see that. So if this, if this yellow line here uh, was a resistance level, right? As soon as we broke up and through it, now we come back into it. Now it's a support level and we bounce off that. And now it's a support level. And now we've broken down below it. So now it's a resistance level, right? These, these levels just kind of stay there. And if you're above it, it's a support level. And if you're below it, it's a resistance level. So, and we go through this, this kind of thing day in and day out in, uh, in DPL. And people will, you know, uh, members will come on and say, you know, oh, can you look at uh, fast? You, so let's do fast right now. And then I'll jump off the mic because I, I want everybody to have a lunch. But as you can see on this 30 minute chart, we're not quite to a 60 minute squeeze, 65 minute squeeze. We might have a 60, but we're in a 30 minute squeeze here, right? We've come up, we're consolidating, right? We're obviously in a trend, right? Because we've popped up, we've gapped up, we're consolidating. And you can see this is very clear, both on the chart and on the volume profile. This is a value area. So this entire area here is a value area or a volume profile node, right? And within that node, you have 
uh, value area low. We have a value area high roughly in this range. And then we have a point of control on the largest piece that sticks out. And I'll make that point of control red, right? So down here is support, up here is resistance. You can plainly see that on the chart. How many times has, has, it, been, has it been used as support? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven and most of the morning, right? That is a well-established support level. We can all agree on that, right? Well, what about what about resistance? And it's it's not exact. We almost had a breakout here, but we were still forming this pattern. We had a false breakout here and then support, support. I mean, uh, yeah, uh, resistance, sorry, resistance, resistance. So this is the range we're playing in and most of the people are around this 6011 level. So what we're looking for in fast is to pick it up off of support, which, which I did today, right? This morning, I picked it up off support. And what I want to see is it come into this level up here at 6010. And I'd like to see it push through. Once it pushes through, it will most likely retest, which means come back into it. And then I'd like it to push up. Okay. What I don't want to see is up into that level and then roll over. But this is going to act as a intermediary resistance level. It will bounce off of that or it will at least pause there. And I know that because I've drawn the lines on the chart. And now when I come out and I'm looking at it on a five minute, I know where those lines are. And I know that if I was taking a scalp trade or a quick trade, I'm going to take it off support. And I know I should be looking to take it off into this point of control. And that's how I mix the two TPS pattern plays and volume profile. Does anybody have any questions on that? I'm sorry. Uh, I kind of ran through that fairly quickly, but that's how we really use the two of those. Uh, Ray, I just changed the colors. If you click on the link, if, if you, I, I just went in here and the up down value area and value area down, I just changed the color to whatever you want it to be. Yeah, Kareen, I did record this. How do I get the POC? The POC, oh, did I just turn that off? The POC, this red line, point of control, is this largest, see that largest area of volume in this value area node? That's the POC. Now, if you don't quite know how to calculate POC yet, <coughs> excuse me, let me get rid of that. You can actually turn auto POC on right here in your VRVP settings. And it'll put it there for you. I tend to like a dotted line. But see, that, that POC is, is put on the chart for me. I don't need that because as we start to move into larger time frames, right, it, it puts it somewhere else because now it's looking for the POC of this entire chart, right? So it puts it down here. And all I want to see right now is these people right here. That's why this is a, a visual range volume profile. Does that make sense? Dennis, explain what? And can you be a little bit more um, in depth? 
in that question. I, I feel like I've been explaining it, so I don't know what part I need to re-explain. Uh, the squeeze. The, the squeeze is down here, and it's just a representation of consolidation. It's when it's it, you get these red dots uh, when the, the stock is quiet and consolidating. Um, and it just sets you up for a larger move. So if you take positions, uh, generally, if you take a position when you're in a squeeze, um, you have a higher probability of a more outsized, larger move when that squeeze fires, uh, meaning it fires to the long side or to the short side. And we don't know. We, we never really know which way it's going to fire. Um, but if we do our trend, trend is up, right? Trend is your friend. So the stock is most likely going to continue to move in the trend. Not always, but most likely. So you have that trend. If you, if we're in an uptrend and we're playing a squeeze, we're playing that long. So we want that to, to, uh, break to new highs. That's, that's what we're playing. Yeah, uh, that's a great question, Mastodon. Yeah, I uh, I typically do not take entries based on the EMAs. I take entries based on the volume profile. And that's just sort of a new addition of, of me blending the, both volume profile and um, TPS. What is the base of the squeeze? Like, how is it? How is it formed? Is that what you mean, Michelle? Our Satin, yes, there is volume profile on Thinkorswim. It's just not as good and not as dynamic. So I trade in Thinkorswim, but I uh, do all my charting in TradingView. Uh, the squeeze is formed. We get the red dots because the Keltner channels are inside of the Bollinger Bands. That's just another way of, sh of knowing that there's consolidation. But this squeeze, um, this, this uh, uh, squeeze indicator does that for you. Uh, RQ Satin VP is called a volume profile on Thinkorswim. And if you want my my uh grid for think or swim you can you can just use that the this link uh charts i think there's the think or swim link that you can click on and then open in think or swim and it will give you all the pieces that you need and i'll before i jump off here i'll just toggle over really quickly and show you what that looks like um hold on a minute and i can show you let me toggle my screen over to um stream toss okay can you see think or swim let me make sure my mic is still on yep mic's still on okay now you should be able to see think or swim this is the same setup for think or swim. Um, I just have a five minute chart, a 30 minute chart, a 78 minute chart, a daily chart and a weekly chart. And then in the, in the bottom right hand corner, I have the ticks, the VIX and the ADD. Those are uh, internals and the put call ratio. And so uh, you can see on this, daily chart, I have volume profile in there, but it's not dynamic like trading view. So it's just, it's static based on the time frame that I'm looking at. And the point of control is here in red. But if you want to, that's not right. If you go into studies, if you want it on the left-hand side of your chart, you just go into studies, you hit the gear icon, 
And then on expansion in the middle needs to be turned to no. And that puts it on the left hand side of your charts. But you see, this is the same setup as you were just looking at on trading view. Uh, student, it's when the Keltner channels are inside the Bollinger Bands. So as you can see on this chart, we have Bollinger Bands on here, right? In this light gray color. And if there were Keltner channels on, on, the, on here, the, where we have a squeeze down here, in this section, the Keltner channels would be inside the Bollinger Bands. Or I'm sorry, I'm saying that backwards. The Bollinger Bands would be inside the Keltner channels. Because the Bollinger Bands expand when we get movement and they contract when we get consolidation. So I'm sorry, I was saying that backwards. Um, big T it's, it's a, um, I'm looking at the red dots. See these, all these red dots are not, or these dots are green here at the bottom and there's red histogram. It's a squeeze when the dots are red and the histogram can be whatever. See, here's another one over here, squeeze. And we have blue histogram. So they're, they're not interrelated. So on my thinkorswim charts, I have a five minute up. I have a 30 minute up because I love to play a 30 minute squeeze. It's my favorite. 78 minute daily and a weekly. And this is just so, as you can see over here on my left, which I'll talk about at one, which I need to jump off so I can get ready for that. Over here on the squeeze watch list, you know, I can click on GD at the top and I can see multi, multi, multiple time frames and say, do I like this? Does it set up for me? Yes or no? And then just go on to the next one. Do I like this? Do I like this? Right. And I can just glance at it. So for instance, let's look at VRTX. You know, if I like something on the 30 minute chart, and I want to know if this thing is in an uptrend for a trend pattern squeeze. I just look over here at the weekly and you think that's in an uptrend. Yes. Does that make sense? Sorry. I'm trying to catch up here on chat. I apologize if I'm missing. No squeeze does not is a squeeze does not always predict an up move. The squeeze predicts a move in one direction or the other um, out of that consolidation. So we give ourselves an edge by, uh, by making sure we're in an uptrend when we take, when we take a squeeze trade, because it's more, more likely than not to continue on its way up. But a squeeze does not predict up or down. It's neither. It just predicts consolidation. Uh, Gunner, how long of a period do I need to confirm a trend? It depends. You know, if I'm in a five minute chart, you know, I need a 30 minute chart to confirm, confirm an uptrend. If I'm playing a daily chart, I need a weekly to confirm an uptrend, right? It's. Um, it depends on the time frame chart that you're playing. If all of them confirm an uptrend, then great, let's go. I like to trade stuff at, I have a, you can see over here, I have an all time high. I like to trade stuff that is right near its all time high. Yeah, Schwab did buy TD or Ameritrade. The Bollinger Bands are here in light gray. You can see on the 30 minute chart.
And you, uh, Nasir, yes, you enter a trade when the squeeze is on. And then when the squeeze fires, you're ideally riding it in that direction for profits. Ideally. Uh, the monitor that you see up now, the size is a 34 inch ultra wide. And then the one you were on before was a 27 inch. Uh, NVIDIA, I'm going to toggle back to my, uh, my other charts cause they're a little bit easier for me to read. Let's look at NVIDIA, man, we've got some strong buying here. NVIDIA is not in a squeeze, but it depends on the time frame chart. So let's, you know, we can look at a daily, you know, a 195, a 130. We have a 130 minute squeeze, All right? That's why we toggle between these, um, these time frames, because you can find a squeeze a lot of times on smaller time frames. So no, it's not in a daily squeeze, but it is in a 130 minute squeeze. Yeah, Netflix, uh, NVIDIA did uh, gap down today. Uh, William, I cannot share this, that 30 minute squeeze watch list, but I can show you how to build it. It's not a shareable uh, thing. Um, on YouTube, I have a, a, a video on how to create it and you have to build it for yourself. Yes, and typically when we're playing a TPS uh, setup, we are using options to um, to play that. You can play stock too, but options just give you a little bit more leverage. And that's a whole other key to playing these when you're buying options is if you're in a 30-minute squeeze, you need to be you know maybe two weeks out. But if you're in a daily squeeze, you need to be four weeks out because the options are going to get chewed up by theta. Raymond and Thinkorswim, you need to open up the indicator and hit the ear, uh, hit studies and then hit the gear icon for trading view and then put expansion on, to no. Expansion in the middle of that needs to be set to no. Gary, that's great. Paper trade, I think that's fantastic. Great. Learn, make mistakes, um, but just know when you switch to real money, uh, the emotions change. So uh, make sure you have your risk parameters in place. Uh, this setup is on TradingView, and it um, if you click the link um, in a in HG charts, if you click the TradingView uh, chart link there, you should be able to upload it. Uh, earnings on the chart is usually, is just right there. It's usually on the chart for you. All right, everyone, I'm coming back on in, you know, what is it? 35 minutes. I'm going to take a break, rest my voice, get something to eat. Um, I will go over how to scan for these trades and then I'll even, uh, go through how we, you know, pick options for it, if that will help. Um, there's, there's just so many things to, to go over, um, that I will, uh, I'll try to get to them all slowly. Remember we're, we're in OPEX week, right? And when I come on, I'll talk about that really quickly before we jump over to, um, <clears throat> think or swim to do some scanning. All right. Uh, take care everyone. I'll see you in about, uh, 35 or so minutes.